Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. We're going to be talking about the new update and DLC that's been dropped by the developers. Now the reason I'm excited about this update is because I'm from India and my country is represented much better by four different civilizations now. Until now the French were represented by the Burgundians and the Franks. The Italians were represented by the Italians, Byzantines and the Sicilians. But until now, India was represented by just one civilization. This update drastically changes that. I'm going to go through the important parts of the update here and I'll leave the rest for you guys to scroll through in your free time. The link is in the description. Now, uh, among the change for the, the general section, using the attack move command no longer instantly speeds up specific units to catch up with the rest of the formation. Uh, players used to abuse this one a lot to make their archers difficult to catch up to. I'm glad the developers have fixed this. The attack move command now has an extremely short delay before units move to the target location start attacking for the first time. Again, this was brought to prevent the abuse of the attack move. And uh, monks with relics no longer accept a drop of order on an unrelated building which, which caused them to stop. A movement command is now issued instead. Well, this basically means that if you are queuing up commands by shift clicking with a monk, as in to pick up a relic and to place it in a monastery, but uh, say you right click a building other than a monastery, the monk moves to the building instead of stopping at his place. And uh, melee units task to attack units using attack move micro no longer occasionally turn idle. This is a good change. Reworked siege towers to unload the units to be more consistent. Again, a great change. Villagers now start reseeding depleted farms after being ungarrisoned onto them from the town center. Now, this is a great change uh, and it helps especially after a raid. Um, when being tasked to attack a gate, trebuchets and formations will now pick the closest part of the gate as a target. I like this change as well. Now, for the fixes. Players are no longer able to see chopped trees and resource depletion graphics through the fog of war. This is really big because if you previously scouted an area and you left that area, you could even tell if a tree was being chopped by your enemy even if your scout had no line of sight over there. This information could be used to go and raid your enemy after that. And players can no longer see unbuilt foundations of enemy players if treaties active. Okay. Villagers who were tasked to gather before being attacked by a boar will no longer attempt to fight back instead of moving to their target location. This prevents inconsistent behavior when luring boar and sending the lurer back to the back to gather instead of issuing a direct move command. So they finally fixed the boar bug where players would lose a villager because the villager turned back to shoot the boar when he's uh, running away. Fixed an issue where AI player gates constantly open and close in campaign scenarios. Okay. Line of sight check is now ignored for fishing ships when looking for the next closest fish resource node. I guess now they'll go for the closest fish rather than the closest fish in their line of sight. Uh, good, good change, this could mean they're less likely to run behind shore fish. It is no longer possible to see resources li life path through the fog of war when using the Marco cheat. I haven't used cheats for a long time so I really don't know much about this one. Human town centers can now be repaired in the feudal age, even if the player has more than two. Uh, I guess this applies only to custom scenarios because humans can only have a maximum of two town centers in the feudal age. The winged hazard upgrade is now available and auto research to Poles and Lithuanians in full tech tree games. Fair enough, but I don't really play full tech tree games. Now we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of the patch, the civilization balance. Okay, so town centers can now be repaired even if the player owns exactly zero stone. In case you don't know, previously you needed at least one stone in your stockpile to repair a town center, but it would only cost you wood to repair the TC. This is a huge buff for defense, and I really like this change. Siege units and ships are now resistant to armor ignoring attacks. Similarly to buildings, I guess they're referring to uh, units like Laetus and the new uh, Dravidian infantry and cavalry with their unique tech when they're talking about this. Berbers. Any genitor food cost decreased from 50 to 40. This is a buff for the Berbers and all their allies. As for the Bohemians, 
monasteries are no longer affected by the wood discount bonus. This is enough for their uh, monk rush and also a bit of enough to their fasting period, I guess. Hofnitzer attack damage and bonus values decreased from 55 to 50. And Hofnitzer blast radius decreased from 0 0.85 to 80. Um, first, uh, they've nerfed the Hofnitzer's attack. And they've nerfed their attack bonus versus ships, Hussite wagons, fishing ships and other stone defenses. Previously, they used to do 55 plus 55 damage to them. Now they do 50 plus 50, which is a bit of a nerf. And now they have nerfed the blast radius. So this reduces their ability to take out large masses of units. Now this used to be really annoying on closed maps like Amazon Tunnel, Black Forest and Michi. Where a huge mass of siege onagers will be taken out by a few Hofnitzes. Now on to the Burmese. New civilization bonus. Battle elephants have plus one melee armor and plus one pierce armor. This is a buff. How do I affect reduce from... Uh, 1 slash 2 to 1 slash 1 armor okay so basically they end up with one extra melee armor and the tech has been nerfed Anipur cavalry cost changed from 650 food and 400 gold to 400 food 400 gold this is a huge buff Arambai train time changed from 21 seconds to 18 seconds another buff Human mercenaries now enables training 5 free elite Kipchaks per castle owned, including castles built at a later time. This is a huge buff. Because if, a, if each teammate has 5 castles, each of them can train 25 Kipchaks. And it doesn't matter even if they build their castles later. Mercenary Kipchaks no longer require the Imperial Age to be available for human players' allies. Mercenary Kipchak train time changed from 20 seconds to 12 seconds. So overall they are buffing humans when it comes to team games. Ethiopians no longer receive bonus resources at the game start in games with feudal or later starting age. I guess the developers are targeting um, their Empire Wars game. Hindustanis. They were previously known as the Indians and got a few changes in their DLC like a new unique unit and some other buffs imperial camel rider cost decreased from 1200 food 600 gold to 1000 food 500 gold this is a buff because it lets them get their imperial camel upgrade much sooner and imperial camel rider attack damage decreased from 9 to 8 it's a slight nerf to their base attack to compensate for the cheaper upgrade but remember that they also do 18 damage to cavalry as a bonus so minus one attack does not amount to much when they are fighting against cavalry. Incas. Team bonus replaced with spearmen and skirmishers plus two line of sight. This new team bonus is definitely better than the old one. I guess this would help civilizations like the Britons, Spanish, Byzantines and the Mayans. Khmer. Ballista elephant attack increased from 8 to 10 for the base version and 9 to 11 for the elite version. This is a really bad change and it makes the Khmer kind of overpowered. Koreans, war wagon base wood cost increased from 115 to 125. Uh, so I guess with their bonus, the war wagon now costs 100 wood rather than 92 wood. This is a good change in my opinion. Lithuanians, lighters now deal the correct amount of damage to dark and feudal age houses. I didn't know about this issue until now. Mayans fish and fish traps are now properly affected by the Mayan civilization bonus of longer lasting resources. So this buffs their water play. Portuguese Feitoria wood and gold resource generation rates adjusted from 1 wood and 0.7 gold per second to 0.7 wood and 1 gold per second. Food and stone generation rates remain unchanged. Okay, so this nerfs them on maps like islands where uh, wood is limited. Saracens. Mameluk no longer has the archer armor class which resulted in receiving bonus damage from units such as the skirmisher. This is a massive buff. Zealotry is now available in the castle age. Madrasa has been removed. It's too strong because assuming you also have bloodlines it lets you have 150 hp camels in the castle age it might need enough 
New Imperial Age Unique Technology Counterweights Trebuchets and Mangonel Line plus 15 percent attack cost 650 food and 500 gold. This deck seems okay. It makes Saracen Siege even stronger since they receive every siege deck except Heavy Scorpion anyway. I would honestly prefer this as a Castle Age deck and Zealotry as an Imperial Age deck because that makes more sense. Sicilians, Donjon Surge and Train Time changed from 20 seconds to 16 seconds in Feudal Age and Castle Age matching the Train Time of Surge and Strain in Castles. Okay. Hauberg cost changed from 500 food 400 gold to 700 food 600 gold. Really good change. It's, an, it's a much needed nerf. That tech was totally broken. Slavs, Orthodoxy replaced with de Detonates. Replaces 40% of castles and towers town. Slavs, Orthodoxy replaced with Detonates. Replaces 40% of castles and towers stone cost with wood cost 400 wood and 200 uh, gold castles now cost 260 wood and 390 stone this is more of a late game tech because wood is an important resource in the castle age the devs are making it easier for the slavs to spam their unique unit in the late game towers would now cost um, 100 wood and 75 stone but unfortunately, Slavs only get guard towers, so it's more of a castle thing. Tatars. Flaming camels now deal 25 bonus damage against siege units. Bonus damage against buildings increase from 100 to 200. Okay. Vietnamese. Paper money effect replaced by lumberjack slowly generate gold in addition to wood. Paper money cost increased from 500 food 300 wood to 600 wood 350 gold. Okay, so the devs are slowly moving away from unused decks. Okay, this is a good change. Now for the units and buildings. Camel rider line of sight increased from 4 to 5. Okay, that's another buff for the camel. Heavy Scorpion Pierce Armor increased from 7 to 8. I am not sure if this is necessary because they are really resistant to archers anyway. Feudal Age Watchtower and Donjon hit points increase from 700 to 850 and 1000 to 1250 respectively. Um, so I guess Tower Rushing might be back. Elite Elephant Archer upgrade time increased from 60 to 80 seconds. Okay. Elephant Archers are now trainable in the archery range, can no longer be trained in the castle. Upgrade time has been increased, and you gotta research the elite upgrade and train the unit at an archery range. Remember that it's easier to put on a few ranges than a castle. Elephant Archer train time increase from 25 seconds to 34 seconds. Wow. Elephant Archer hit points decrease from 280 to 230. Elite version hit points decreased from 330 to 280. Elephant Archer Pierce Armor decreased from 3 to 2. Now to compensate for the fact that they can be trained from ranges, they have nerfed their train time, hit points and pierce armor. Elephant Archer Cavalry Archer Armor decreased from minus 2 to minus 7, resulting in additional damage received by units with an attack bonus versus the Cavalry Archer Armor class. Okay, so this makes skirmishers and camel archers an even stronger counter to them. Elephant Archer Attack Bonus versus Buildings in Stone Walls removed. Good. That's a much needed nerf because it's a spammable unit now. Elephant Archer Accuracy reduced from 100 to 70 and Elite Version Accuracy reduced from 100 to 85. Okay, so you need to get Thumb Ring if you want 100% Accuracy. And Elephant Archer Cost decrease from 100 food 70 gold to 90 food 70 gold. So it's a slightly uh, cheaper unit. Elephant Archer movement speed increase from 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. So this is a speed buff. Skirmishers now deal 0 bonus damage versus Cavalry Archer armor class resulting in additional damage when attacking units with negative values of Cavalry Archer. 
previously non elite skirmishers didn't have an attack bonus versus the cavalry archer class so this is done to make the non elite skirmisher a good counter even to the elephant archer thank you so much for watching if you have any feedback i would appreciate it if you post it down in the comment section this is the first time i'm doing this kind of a video so any feedback is appreciated